All right, my friends, welcome back. Terry here, and today we're actually going to do all of the preliminary uh, things that need to be done so we can make sure all the prep work is done so we can get the intake manifold reinstalled. So let's go over what all that entails. All right, my friends, so what is the prep work that needs to be done? What we're going to want to do is go ahead and make sure we have all new gaskets put on everything. We get the throttle body cleaned, the idle uh, air control valve cleaned, um, and just get everything and get the CCV installed on the intake manifold and all, thing, all those kinds of things. So that way everything is set and we can go ahead and install it back on the car. All right, my friends, so now we're going to do the prep work on the throttle body as well as the idle control valve. So this here is your idle control valve. I went ahead and took it off of my intake manifold. And, uh, of course, the throttle body over there. I got a brand new gasket for the throttle body. And then we're going to be using some carb and throttle body cleaner to get these nice and clean. So you can go ahead and use any kind you want. Uh, this is the one that I'm going to go with today. and. Uh, Let's get these cleaned up. Now your idle control valve on the on your intake manifold, it actually would sit right here just above where the throttle body sits. Now when I removed my intake manifold, I left this on at the time because you don't have to remove this to take the manifold off. But uh, I do want to get this clean, but that's where that sits. It's just once you have everything else already off, this will just pull right out. This is what your air idle control valve is going to look like up close and there's actually i don't know if you're going to be able to see it it's pretty dark in there there's actually a little valve in there that flaps open and closed and what happens is so much carbon ends up building up in these that that valve will usually get stuck so when you take this off the way the test of yours is stuck is you want to rotate it it should sound like a rattle can. So think of what it sounds like when you shake a spray paint can. It should sound like a rattle can. So when I turn mine, you can see I can't hear anything. My valve is stuck. So if I do it a little bit more forcefully to try to loose it, there it goes. See how it's sticking? It's sticking. So we're going to go ahead and get this clean so that way that valve will open and close properly. Now all you need is some of your throttle body cleaner and when you're spraying that in here you want to make sure you keep the, control, the, the valve upside down like this. So your electrical thing will be on top. You want to keep it upside down this way all the gunk and stuff you break free falls out and doesn't actually go deeper into the unit itself. Get that in there, and then you can use um, an old toothbrush or Q-tips or whatever you have to kind of get in there to clean that out. Now I got myself some Q-tips because it's going to be kind of hard to reach in there to clean all that filth out. Yeah, let that excess fluid come out of there, and we'll just start swabbing away and get this nice and clean. You try to get what I can with the cotton swab here, and then we'll go in with a some paper towel. So I'm stabbing this around where the valve sits because I'm not going to be able to reach that deep with my finger. So just use your Q-tips to clean around where the valve is. Try to get that nice and clean. Get it on both sides. Okay, and then what I can do, use this paper towel, and I'll go in there with my finger and try to get around the barrel here. Look at all that filth. Good and dirty in there. All right, let's see. 
There we go. That's what you want. Nice rattle. So we got a lot of gunk out of there. I'm gonna go ahead and spray it some more, just for good measure, and uh, this is good to go at that point. Just gonna let it kind of sit before I let the rest of it drip out. I'm gonna let it work it and then drain it. There you go. this nice and dry and you can see a lot better in there now it was so dark because of all of the carbon but now you can actually see through it all right and uh just double Check around the valve itself, that little valve flap in there. Make sure there's nothing around it. So when it, like that, so it's still kind of dirty in there yet. Try to get what we can. I don't want this to stick anymore. All right, so that's all you gotta do. Just keep doing that process until you get it uh, sufficiently clean to your liking. Just remember to keep this part down so none of the, the carbon deposits or liquid end up going deeper into the unit itself and uh, yeah that's all you got to do to get that clean and it will rattle quite nicely that's what we want next is the throttle body itself now the outer side of this is already pretty clean so it's not too bad I don't really have to worry about this side however when you flip it over and you look at the part that actually is mounts to the intake manifold itself this is where you'll start to see deposits. So we're gonna go ahead and clean this all out. So when we hook up the throttle body, the flap will be able to open and close uh, freely. And we'll go ahead and replace this gasket as well. So let's go ahead and it's the same thing. We're just going to use some throttle body cleaner on this. Now make sure when you're cleaning these parts, you're not using brake cleaner. All right, brake cleaner is a very common cleaner that uh, people like to use on their car parts and stuff. Uh, use the correct cleaners. Some of them are too harsh for sensitive parts. Um, and the good thing about uh, throttle body cleaner is, well, first that's made for the throttle body, which is what this is, but it's also, I believe, has like a small amount of lubricant in it to help keep the moving parts lubricated so that way if you clean them, they'll keep moving freely. Brake cleaner is too abrasive and it will clean all that out and then your parts could seize up. So don't use brake cleaner, use the, the correct stuff. So throttle body cleaner is perfect for your throttle body and mine has the carb cleaner all mixed in. Make sure you're using the proper products. That being said, let's go ahead and spray some of this cleaner in there and uh, Oh yeah, that's coming off nice and easy. Beautiful. Strip that off. So this is coming off very easily. Now if you have your stuff real thick, get yourself a scour pad, but make sure it's uh this is a non-scratch one. This is safe to use on like your sensitive like Teflon pans and stuff. That's what I use for my when I clean my parts is I use a scratch resistant one because I don't want to leave any scratches or gouges in any of this any of the aluminum or anything like that. So make sure you don't get one that's overly abrasive. So this is a non-scratch scour pad. But since this stuff isn't even caked on, I'm going to just spray it and wipe it out. Take my bolts out so I don't lose these. We'll just set these aside for the moment. Now normally you, would, uh, you wouldn't want any of the cleaners getting on your gasket, but I'm putting a new gasket on, so I don't care about this gasket. Okay. 
just like that and that came very clean now we're just going to go ahead and wipe it dry and thankfully mine's in such good condition i'm not going to have to worry about any, anything being caked on too badly and you just wipe it dry and get that excess carbon out and we'll repeat these steps a few times Make sure you're also doing this in a well-ventilated area. As you can see, I am exposed to the outdoors, so I am good. Do not do this inside your home, or if you're in your garage, make sure you don't have your garage door closed. Uh, the fumes from these cleaning sprays are pretty strong. And then just keep on wiping it clean. That's all there is to it. All right, so I was able to move the flap. And that's allowing me to get the edge of this clean as well. This is just to make sure that when it closes, it's not scraping all this excess uh, carbon along the, the sides. So make sure we get that nice and clean. And we can get all up and along inside here. Try not to pinch your fingers in between, uh, but just make sure you get all your edges clean. And then with my scratch-resistant scour pad and a little bit of... Uh, throttle body cleaner on it just go around and I'm cleaning the mating surface so when I go and reattach everything it'll have a good seal so I don't have any kind of vacuum leaks once it's clean to your liking we'll go ahead now and we'll use a little pick tool and we'll pull out the old gasket here just like so this is our old one. It's actually still in pretty good shape, but they're inexpensive, so it doesn't hurt to just go ahead and replace them anyway. And I went ahead and got the L-Ring brand uh, O-Ring for this, and uh, I'll have the parts numbers and all your information in the description below. And... I don't believe it matters which way it goes in. I think it's universal one way or the other. So we'll just slip that new gasket in. Remember with gaskets, you never stretch them. Just slowly work them and they will go into place. Just like that. All right, very good. I do believe this has definitely got more of a lip on top. This one here has been kind of rounded off over time. So. I think it would have started to lose its seal eventually here soon. So it's a good thing that we're replacing it. It's not, it's still very malleable. It's not cracked or anything, which is, which is gr what, what you want for a gasket, but it doesn't sit as high. So it's not going to have as good of a tight seal. All right, so that's all you got to do. That's how you go ahead and you clean the your air idle control valve as well as your throttle body and we've replaced the gasket that's fantastic now we can go ahead and get the ccv replaced on the intake manifold so i went ahead and i ordered a brand new ccv system here on rock auto and it comes with everything you're going to need here is your cyclone uh, part right here. This does the the entire. This is like your main part that does all the work. What very important piece. And then it's going to come with all of your different hoses and things that you will need. So we can go ahead and get this assembled. Now they also sell this with a cold air kind of like protective coating on there for an additional cost. It's your call if you want to get the cold weather protection on yours or not. I live down in Georgia, so I don't particularly need it, but if you do live up north, if your car doesn't already have it on there, that is an option for you to get. Now, there has been debate uh, among Z3 owners on whether or not the cold weather little foam coating on the hoses actually does anything or not. Uh, it might just be a waste of money, but again, it's your choice. You do your own research. If you decide you want to pay a little extra 
to have the cold weather protected foam on your hoses, then be on, by, by all means, go ahead and order that particular one. So let's go ahead and let's disassemble the old one. So this is the actual unit right here, right next to where the throttle body connects. Now this is something that you can replace while your intake manifold, manifold is still installed. It's just a lot more difficult to do so. So I recommend definitely taking the manifold off to make this job a lot easier. Now, of course, take the manifold off isn't an easy job, but you know, you got to pick your battles and uh, I had to take mine off anyway, so this just makes it, you know, easier for me. So let's go ahead and take this off. Now, with my purge valve here, we got this hose here. This is the one that connects to your valve cover. And if I find my replacement one, that's going to be this one right here. So let's go ahead and we'll just take this whole unit off. I'll just keep this piece attached. I don't need to disconnect that. I can just take it all off in one piece. And then we will attach the new uh, cyclone piece, and then we will add the, this particular pipe. Now, these are plastic, so do be careful not to crack any of them. If you look closely, you will need a star tool to take this stuff off. All right, T25. That's what we want. Okay, there you have it, T25. Let's go ahead and take these out. You can get yourself a nice little star tool set for your, your screwdrivers or like a, like in a drill bit form or like a socket set. I recommend doing it because doing this with hand tools is very difficult. All right, we got that one out. Set that aside. And now I got to get the one that's located here at the bottom. All right, there we go. T25 screws are out and then this will start to pull out there's a hose that feeds in from the top of your manifold and it hooks underneath this bend here this elbow it goes right underneath and it connects here so you will need to disconnect that should be able to just pinch but it is kind of tight to get your fingers in there and if you follow it around to the top of your manifold it actually connects directly under here on the top. So you could try to disconnect it from the top and just feed it through, whichever works best for you. Just got a round clip that has two serrated spots where you're supposed to pinch it in. So I'm pinching with that. trying to pull the whole hose out from below there we go that came off and then there's going to be another one on this end as well so might as well get them both go ahead and pinch those in now this piece here does come off with some screws you could unscrew this if you want I'm gonna try to do this while keeping that on all right, I was able to get this one disconnected. I just took my needle nose pliers, kept them closed, and just kind of pushed down on the inside of the clamp where the pinch inside is here and here. So I pushed it down enough to where I was able to yank it down. Now, I did break this clamp a little bit, but the replacement hose has comes with a, a new clamp on there, so I didn't really care. But now this part here is disconnected. There we go. Okay. Now that has come off. So that's how that was originally installed. These uh, two pieces here. Got those off. These are junk. And then now you can slide off the actual cyclone unit piece and then this other adapting piece here. All come off together. All right. Now make sure you take note that there is this vacuum cap right here depending on which model engine you have you might actually have a vacuum connected here or you'll have a cap mine is capped off so you're going to want to remove this cap 
is vacuum cap, and you're going to want to put this cap on your new one if yours is capped off. All right, so here's the new one, and I'm going to put that vacuum cap right on that nozzle because this will give you a really bad vacuum leak if you don't remember to do that. So there, now this one is ready uh, for installation. When you grab your replacement hoses, just uh, match up the orientation. This one here that curves through that elbow there has this nozzle on the bottom. That's the part that will connect to this one with the foam. But keep in mind, all yours are going to have foam if you have the cold weather one. But the one that attaches along the top of the manifold is the one that attaches to that nozzle. It's a smaller one, but that pinch is the one that goes on that nozzle so that you can put it on the correct way. So I know this goes like that. So this is the orientation. This is my replacement. It's, these come in very nice Ziploc bags, which I really like that. Normally they come in bags you have to tear open. These are nice little Ziploc bags. So nice and easy to work with. So you can see here is the one that has like that pinch style. And then there's this end here. So that pinch style is what goes on this nozzle right here. So we'll just go ahead and put that on. And, uh, and now that should be locked in place. I can't pull that off. So make sure you push it all the way in. That part's set. And then this is the part that will wrap on through here. Go ahead and get it all nicely twisted so that that comes through because that's going to connect to this unit here once we get that installed. You just come back to the top of the manifold. This piece here is going to connect up here. You can kind of feel in there. Make sure it's clean. Make sure you don't have any white gummy stuff. Mine's nice and clean. Otherwise, you're going to need to clean that all out. So that's nice and clean. And... It should just click right into place. Might actually be a good idea to click this piece in before you attach this one, just so it's a little bit easier. You have a little bit more mobility with it. I'm pushing with all my might. I'm trying to get to see if it should click. No, well, seems to be on. Mine didn't click, but. I'm pulling down pretty hard and it's not coming off, so I think it's on. So yeah, I was hoping to hear a clicking sound. I didn't hear one. I'll, I'll double check everything afterwards, but I'm pulling down really hard and it's not coming off, so I think we're good. Oh, that might have been a click right there, actually. Okay, we're good. Just be careful not to crack any of these plastic pieces. Then we go back to this end. Same thing, this one, we'll click right in. I'm gonna kinda slide that down a little bit so I don't have to pinch on the foam. I got mine to clip in. So what I did is I took my needle nose pliers and it came in from below. The part that's on the sides is the where the actual clip is. I just pushed in on the bottom of the clip with the needle nose pliers to force it the extra distance and it clipped in the place just fine. So that worked out pretty well. All right, back to the other side. All right, now we're back at the back side and we're gonna go ahead and get this piece connected here. Try and get that hose to snap on. All right, I heard it click. So now that hose is attached. All right, now we can go ahead and bolt that back down. So go ahead and grab your T25.
all right just like that and then just make sure you get these nice and snug don't over tighten you don't want to crack the plastic Grab your other little hose here. Now, take note, you're going to have a 90 degree bend, and then you're gonna have more of like, I don't know, 45 we'll say. I don't really know the angle of that. But you had the, the 90 here, and then you have this uh, slider bend here. The slight bend is the one that's going to attach to the cyclone. Your 90, goes to your valve cover. So then you just go ahead and stick that on. I got it connected. There's an O-ring on the inside of this, which makes it very difficult to get this to actually clip together. So I ended up having to flip this over so that this was on top so I could actually put enough pressure on it to clip it in without breaking the plastic hose itself so it'll take a little finagling but just keep pushing until it clips in because you got to get that o-ring the seat on the inside so it will be a little bit of some extra effort to get that one on but you can do it now there's only one hose left and it's the one that's in this bag here and this is the one that will actually connect right here and to your dipstick tube. I will save that one for when we get closer to actually putting the manifold inside. I also still got to get the gaskets replaced on here as well, uh, but we'll do that when we get closer to actually putting this in. I don't want to damage the new gasket, so I would rather leave the old ones on because I keep having to move this manifold around in my garage and stuff. So I would rather damage the old one and then put the fresh new one in when I'm ready to actually install this so I don't damage the new gasket. So that's the how I'm going to handle that situation. And I will save the oil line uh, for then as well because I also have, because I want to pull out that dipstick tube and we will install this oil line and we will replace that o-ring on that dipstick tube all at the same time and then we can put that back in after we put the manifold back in, then we can just snap that hose on right here. So that'll be the plan. All right, everybody, and that's how you go about it. We just did some prep work today. We got some parts clean. We got the new CCV installed for the most part, minus the oil line. But uh, all in all, it's pretty good. This is pretty smooth little prep work that needed to get done. So go ahead and uh, knock it out yourselves. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. If you enjoyed this and this has helped you out, please, please, please hit the subscribe button. Hit the like. And uh, go ahead and check out my Instagram, at Terry as well. And I'll catch you all on the next one. Take care.